It's a great morning here on my side. I hope everyone's having a good morning as well. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking here at the Rolls theorem. It's specifically considered to be a difficult topic for many students, but in this video I want to provide a simplified and a refreshing perspective to this Rolls theorem. It very well falls into the topic of mean value theorems. The Rolls theorem is like a existence theorem which tells you or it clues you into the fact that for any function you're looking at there might be a number within that interval of that function which has a very special or a specific property. What is that specific property that might be present in a certain number within your interval? We will look at that and we will talk about that momentarily. But if you want to apply the Rolls theorem to determine that specific property in your interval then you need to have a function that's continuous over this closed interval a comma b. You don't want to be looking idly at situations of minus infinity to infinity because then you are kind of exceeding the bounds of most functions when you're looking at those infinite interval limits. You also want to be looking at a function which is differentiable over the a and b interval and you normally know provided the continuous function has no corners and no kinks it will very likely be differentiable. Here I've highlighted for you if within that interval the limits are very well in the domain of those type of functions you can automatically assume a and b to be true that polynomials, radicals and rational functions and trigonometric functions will normally and automatically suffice and satisfy a and b and you wouldn't even have to worry about whether you're looking at a continuous or a differentiable function for those styles. In addition, for limits, interval limits a and b, you want to also be able to show and demonstrate that f of a is equal to f of b. If you take this value here and you put it into your function, you get a numerical output. You put that value into the function, they're both equal to each other. If that is the case, a through c are satisfied, then within your interval, there's a certain element or number, c, such that that specific property is manifested. What is that property? That property is that somewhere within your function you have the ability to generate a horizontal tangent line. As a very upfront statement with regards to the Rolls theorem, it is a means by which you can show that a given function will indeed have a point. If these are satisfied, at that point you can generate a horizontal tangent line or the derivative has a value equal to zero which you know represents a horizontal tangent line. And that right there seemingly is not very difficult to understand. You have a continuous differentiable function over the interval, you satisfy this, you will very likely demonstrate that there exists a point and at that point if you were to draw a horizontal tangent line or a tangent line it would have a derivative value of zero and it indeed would be horizontal. Let's look at this graphically because there are some situations where you know upfront that this would not be the case there are other situations where you know this will very likely be the case and the Rolls theorem would very likely allow you to show the existence of that specific property. Consider this graph right here of a certain function. It could be anything. Consider this other graph of another function and it looks something like this. But you could imagine at specifically this point right here and at this point right here what are these values are right here. This could be C1, this could be C2 and we're looking at some interval like from here to here. You could demonstrate a horizontal tangent line slope is equal to zero. Here you could demonstrate a horizontal tangent line slope is equal to zero. But on something like this, it's very difficult, let's say from here A all the way up to B, within this interval it's very difficult to find a point where you will have a horizontal tangent line. You will have tangent lines but they'll probably have very likely positive slopes whether they're steep or shallow but they generally will not be flat. Here you cannot clearly demonstrate the verification of the Rolls theorem but here you can. The procedure for verifying it is not hard by any means. And consider also this, those type of functions which are continuously increasing functions or continuously decreasing functions they won't allow you to apply this. But the functions which have a dynamic continuity, you have some portions which are increasing, some are decreasing, some are increasing, some are decreasing, then there are areas or points where you can demonstrate the verification of this Rolls theorem. Let's look at two classic cases and you know when you see on why I'm bringing this up. Let's demonstrate an interval here minus pi over 4 and pi over 4 and let's demonstrate an interval here we'll do 0 to pi. If you were to look at this 0 to pi for a sine curve here's my pi over 2 here's my pi you would have a curve which would look something like this and of course it has to go through the origin. When you're looking at the tan x from minus pi over 4, I'm not looking at the asymptotes because those would not be within the interval, but here's my minus pi over 4, pi over 4. I'm looking at a curve 
which is looking something like this. Here's my positive one, here's my minus one. Visually, you can tell there's no way for you to demonstrate this to f be the case where f of c or the c value placed into the derivative of your function will generate a horizontal tangent line because you have a continuously increasing function. You cannot demonstrate a horizontal tangent line. But in this specific instance, you can demonstrate very likely if you were to take the derivative of that function and find a certain c value between 0 to pi, there would be a value here where you could demonstrate this. Here you couldn't, but here you can. And how would you demonstrate this? The procedure I've shown you, you have to first show that it's continuous and differentiable, which you can assume it is. You have to show that f of a is equal to f of b. And then we can proceed from there. So let's show you what's f of a over here. You're looking at sine of 0 and you're looking at sine of pi. These are indeed equal to each other because 0 is equal to 0. Then you have to actually demonstrate this right here and utilize this to form and determine that value where you can develop a horizontal tangent line. Find the derivative of this function. The derivative of this function here is cosine x. That represents your derivative of x. But when you put it here with regards to the c, you're looking at f of c, which is equal to cosine of c, which is equal to zero. You have to solve for this value c. In terms of this specific equation, cosine c equals zero, if you were to solve for c, you know here c is clearly equal to pi over two right here. At pi over 2 I have a certain value c where you, you have a horizontal tangent line forming and this very well tells you that c is within the interval a and b. Look at it, it is in the interval of a and b, it falls right in between it. It doesn't have to fall right in between it for the specific theorem but it falls within that interval and you've shown this specific function here to satisfy the Rolle's theorem and you found also the point where that specific quality of a horizontal tangent line can be found. At a value of pi over 2, which is found in this interval, you have a horizontal tangent line. When you look over here, you can do the derivative of this. You'll have a secant square x. Now look at this in terms of f of a and f of b. f of minus pi over 4 is tan of minus pi over 4, which is a minus 1. f of positive pi over 4 is tan of pi over 4, which is 1. These certainly are not equal to each other, so obviously you cannot go into this next determination, f derivative c equals zero, you cannot, because the initial condition is not even satisfied. So this by no means has any point on it where you can determine a specific quality of a horizontal tangent line forming. There will be no point in this interval where you can demonstrate a horizontal tangent line. So this obviously fails the theorem. This passes it. So now you're beginning to see how significant this is with regards to finding that specific quality of a horizontal tangent line in your interval. Let's look at two questions and analyze everything here with regards to this interval, this function. Is there a point somewhere on this interval where we can easily determine a value for which you could demonstrate a horizontal tangent line? Well, you can do it by first finding the derivative of this. You know you have a 6x minus 12. Now you have to apply the actual conditions. You know the function here is polynomial will be continuous it will be differentiable over this domain because generally I've told you you can assume it to be the case for polynomial functions find f of 1 you'd have to plug it in here you do 3 plus 5 is 8 minus 12 you'll have a minus 4 and now find f of 3 remember you, you have to show f of a is equal to f of b if you do then you can proceed to the next step what's f of 3 you'd have to plug it in here you can do 27 minus 36 plus 5 and you would have a minus 4 here as well. We've obviously demonstrated this to be the case. Now you have to find this f of c and make that equation equal to 0. Here's your derivative. You'll do 6c minus 12 is equal to 0. 6c is equal to 12 and c is equal to 12 divided by 6 is 2. Does 2 fall very well within here? It does. c is therefore an element of this interval which includes a and b. And you know you've determined here the value here too in that interval for this function where you can demonstrate a horizontal tangent line. And this is called the Rolle's constant. The Rolle's constant is that numerical number on your interval where you can demonstrate the horizontal tangent line. It's informally called that. But this right here is a specific point on your interval where you can demonstrate this horizontal tangent line to exist for that function. So this question has been solved and it wasn't too hard. Let's look at this second question here. It'll be our last question. You're looking at an exponential function or that interval. You know exponential functions from left to right are constantly increasing. You'll have a y-intercept here of 0 comma 2 because it's vertically translated upwards. But there's basically visually no ability 
to demonstrate any point on this interval, especially minus 10 to 10, where you can demonstrate a horizontal tangent line, let alone even from minus infinity to positive infinity. Constantly increasing or constantly decreasing functions don't work very well with this theorem because they just don't. f of a over here would be you putting f of minus 10, it would be e to the minus 10 plus 1. You don't even have to solve that out. f of b here would be u putting f of 10, which would be e to the power of 10 plus 1. Here, f of a and these two, they just are not the same. Therefore, there's no point in you even plugging in with regards to the derivative, a c value, to find if there is a presence of a horizontal line. There is no presence of a horizontal line. These constantly increasing functions just don't work very well and you cannot find that point in your interval where you can demonstrate a horizontal tangent line. Remember again, for the Rolle's theorem, you're finding within your interval a numerical value where you have a specific property. That property here is where you will have a horizontal tangent line. You must demonstrate that the function is continuous and differentiable. You must also show that f of a is equal to f of b, which then, when you plug in a c value into the derivative, you make that equation equal to zero and you solve for that c. Whatever value you find in terms of you solving for c will be the point where your slope will be zero and it should very well fall within the interval of a and b. It will very well fall right in here by means of this Rolle's theorem. So keep that in mind. This right here is a very good property to be able to do and all of this comes under the general topic of mean value theorems and this very well plays in terms of the other more important mean value theorems. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.